due to the nature of this program. Listener aggression is advised. Hey, I'm Carla. I'm Heidi. And we're the Butcher Baby. This is Charlie Scene. Yo, what's up? This is AJ from Fire from the Gods. This is Rich Ward, the Duke of Metal from Fozzy. Saddam Leader from In Search of Sun. This is Beefcake the Mighty from Guar. And Bustulous Maximus. Hi, this is Chris from Ailstorm. Yo, what's up? This is J Dog from Hollywood Undead. Hi, this is Ash Costello from New Year's Day. This is Tommy Vex from The Bad Wolves. This is Joe from Dead. And I'll tell you now to say fucking metal, yeah. This is Damon from Sleep Killers, and you are listening to Honest Brutality. Hey everybody, welcome to Honest Brutality, the show that is all things rock, metal, and stuff that doesn't suck. I'm your host, Evil, and I'm joined by my co-host. This is Big Sloppy. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Rebel. Hey guys, check it out. So uh, just a couple uh, months ago, we were back at Aftershock uh, 2018 in Sacramento, Ooh. California, and we got to hang out with some guys, and now we get the opportunity to actually sit down and really talk with my buddy, Damien. How you doing? I'm doing good. So you're doing a project called Sleep Killers, and that's kind of what we spent our time talking about at Aftershock. You and me and Sam, and and you hung out with Big Sloppy a little bit on the Rock Rage radio side. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we thought it would be really cool to bring you back on and just really kind of dig into this thing, dig into who you are and why you're doing this a little bit more, because I think it's a super cool project and a really cool concept. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's kind of started from... Uh me and Sam Rivers, you know, we've been buddies for like a long time, like 20 years, maybe longer than that. And uh, we, we both uh, kind of all of us in the band came up in Jacksonville and in that scene. And uh, a lot of people don't realize how many bands are actually from Jacksonville. And anyway, so we all kind of came up together and we talked about, you know, doing some sort of project. And we're like, well, if we're going to do a project, like, look, like we let's just do exactly what we want to do. You know what I mean? There's no managers or labels or anybody telling us anything. Let's just go. I, I own my own studio. And, and so we just went in and started writing really just for fun and just to see kind of what happens. And it just felt good. So we kept doing it and finally got to a place where we're like, you know what? Like, like maybe we should like really, really do this. Right. And so then we started talking to some of our, our friends, you know, uh, Bobby Amaru, uh, who used to be in burn season with me, uh, and played drums in that band who now is the singer of saliva and has been for golly, eight, eight, nine years or so. Uh, uh, we brought him in and, uh, and then I also brought in, uh, Adam Latif who also played in puddle of mud. And that's kind of where we're at currently with it. We finished up the album. We shot the first video. We're about to shoot another video. Um, and you know, I guess you could say so far so good. You mentioned a few things there. One, there's no producers or management companies, whatever, breathing down your neck is, is music fun when you're doing that? I mean, there's, you don't have the stress of yeah, business well, and I mean, all that it, breathing it, down your neck. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I think it just, when it gets real corporate feeling, Mm -hmm. And you have, you know, pretty much everyone that's in the band, you know, has felt that pressure of, you know, Hey, we don't, we don't hear the single yet guys, or we don't, <laughs> blah, 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 we don't have this or whatever. You know what I mean? Just like these things where you're like, dude, get the fuck out of here. Right. Like, let right. us do our thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Stop stifling our creativity and, and filling our heads full of a bunch of bullshit. You know what? No, we're going to go in here and we're going to do songs. And at the end of the day, we go, you know what? That sounds badass. So and if we really, really believe that and, and really try to kind of stay with that kind of mentality, I really believe wholeheartedly that there'll be a lot of other people who dig it too. Yeah, absolutely. And there's something to be said with creative control. You know, it, it's, it, you can feel it in the music. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Like the passion. You can feel the passion there. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, that definitely is kind of, that was, I guess, kind of the, the foundation for everything that we wanted to do and, and kind of stand for, I guess, as far as the creative side is concerned. And, 
And so that's where it started. It was like, let's just do stuff that we really dig and we'll figure the rest out if we even need to. And so now we're, it's now all of a sudden we kind of are needing to in order to (laughs) kind of let this thing start, uh, you know, growing legs a little bit. So, you know, it's like, well, yeah, okay, we're, we are going to have to have you in order to bottom line is, is you, you not trying to fool anyone. You have to have a team around you in order to be heard with as much, just so many bands and noise that there is out right. there and on the internet right. and, and just stuff's coming out all the time. And, and it, as much as we hate the whole like super group thing or any of those like lame, you know, <laughs> titles you could put on stuff. It's yeah. like, Hey, yeah. if it, it gives it gives people to at least uh, give us a listen, and dude, that's awesome. It, and that's important. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's kind of where we're at is we're just building a team and trying to, you know, uh, let this thing kind of just grow organically. I guess you could say. That's awesome. You guys are doing something that's that's really cool, and you're playing music that you like. You're not. You don't have to write songs like. Well, this might pertain to this group of people, or this might pertain a demographic. To, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, you don't have to write songs geared towards a single or whatever. You you write the stuff you like, kind of like I likened that to say what Nirvana did. Mm-hmm. Fuck what everybody else is yeah. doing. We're gonna do our thing. What Guns and Roses did, and you know yeah. all these other bands. Yeah, I see that the the ones that are successful, they write what they like, and they don't fuck everybody else. If you, we like exactly. it, so we're hoping you'll like it too. We're not writing it to please you. We're pleasing us, and hopefully you come along for the ride. It's kind of the idea. Well, and, and the cool thing too is for once, you know, uh, you know, Limp Biscuit when it comes out, has to sound like Limp Biscuit. You yeah. know what I mean? They can, yes. they can try to switch it up a little bit or grow creatively some or do whatever you want to call it, but they still got to sound like Limp Biscuit at the end of the day, and that comes with a whole set of pressures and things or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, Sam and I were talking about this as the kids. Like nobody knows what we sound like. Yes, we played in these other bands, but nobody knows. So we can be anything. Yeah. Right? We could we could sound literally like whatever the heck. We could sound like Tool, or we could sound like Pan. That was kind of you know liberating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd imagine Dirty Foot uh, is getting a lot of buzz. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of positive feedback just from my side, from an outside looking in. How, how's it feeling on your side? It's good. It's good. You know, kind of not centering everything around the whole Lent Biscuit thing, but Lent Biscuit notoriously has a lot of lovers and haters. Right. Uh, and we knew that even just because of that name being inevitably attached to ours because of Sam, that we were going to get a lot of both. And that's exactly what we got. <laughs> <laughs> it's people, people that are like, so super into it that like, they're literally like losing their minds. And then, there are the guys who are like, I could just tell by who's in this band that this is the worst shit I'll ever hear in my whole life. And I will never, ever, ever, ever listen to it, ever, yeah. even if everyone dies on this earth. <laughs> Period. <laughs> like, I mean, literally, like, they say shit, and I'm just like, wow, like, that took a lot of time and effort to think of that. Right. One, yeah. of my, one of my favorites was, uh, uh, what was it, uh, hopefully all these guys will OD soon and we'll never have to hear this garbage again. <laughs> Damn! Damn! Wow. But you know what? As they say, there's no such thing as bad publicity, right? <laughs> oh, no. Don't, well, no, but no, but that, like that guy saying that, then there's like 30 people. Uh, you can't make fun of OD. That's bad. <laughs> that's fucking, oh, my you gosh. Fucking shut up your ass, you motherfuckers. This is the best band that's ever been heard, ever. Uh, and, uh, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, it turns like into this big war and, it yeah. doesn't mean like we don't like internalize any of that. We think it's hilarious. We're right, like, wow, right. like that guy is so mad at us, like <laughs> for nothing. Yeah, like, we released the song, and he's like, he's like, I think he's genuinely angry, and now he's causing <laughs> other people to be angry. I'm like, man, <laughs> you, know, just, you know, if you don't like it, you could actually not say nothing, or you could, <laughs> hey, they suck, and I go, cool, thanks. At you know, least whatever. you said something. But yeah, yeah just, thanks. Well, it's just funny to see him see people go back and forth. It's like I said, we've had tons of tons of people just. uh you know, just loving it. And obviously we appreciate all that. And honestly, I, I kind of really appreciate the haters just as much just because it's entertaining and it keeps all the people who love the band kind of engaged even more yeah. than we could ever even begin to yeah. do. Right, <laughs> right, right. You know, I did notice that your views on YouTube for the video are right around 60,000 already. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of a sore subject right at the moment. Oh, because. Uh-uh. Uh, no, I don't know if you heard about this whole, there was like this breach thing that happened uh, not that long ago with YouTube and 
Anyways, we we're, we're having troubles with YouTube. Our, our our views are actually way way more than that. Oh, really? Keep, every day, every day they keep bouncing around by about thirty to fifty thousand or so. It's really strange. I don't. I don't. Huh. I I don't. I'm not savvy enough in that area to to quite speak the right terms for it. But uh, it's it's been uh, confusing to watch. <laughs> you go back tomorrow, there'll be like a hundred thousand views, and then you'll go back the next day, and there'll be like fifty, and then it'll jump up to like seventy-five, and it'll go back down to fifty, then it'll go back up to a hundred, and I'm just like, when our uh, our marketing company, I'm like, well, what is going on over there, guys? Like, what the Crazy. heck? Yeah, it's like it's not just you. It's like it's happening to people right now. I'm like, okay. Well, either you've watched it or you haven't. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, you can't unwatch it. Well, apparently, it. well, he 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 said that you know Google and YouTube are literally like like dealing with the government. It's like you can't tell them what to do. Like they right. do what they want to do, and that's kind of yeah. the way it works. And uh, and uh, some some client of uh, of my my uh, of the, this company said that they had a video that was approaching. I'm not going to give any names, but. Uh, it's approaching 20 million views and it got knocked down to a hundred thousand views. Wow. So if you can imagine how upset that they are right at the moment, like this is our first video. So like we, we kind of like think of it more like it's almost kind of funny. Like again, like it's like the haters thing. We're like, wow. It's like, how is it possible for it to just keep jumping up and down and up and down <laughs> and up and down? I was like, <laughs> It happened like five or six days in a row, and we we're just like, okay, well, I guess that's just what's going to keep happening. <laughs> yeah, that's bizarre. Yeah, so it does some weird stuff. So sorry, I didn't mean to go on a tangent. But that's okay. no, that's no. very no. interesting. I, I, pre- I do appreciate the congratulations. That's, that's <laughs> uh, and, uh, I appreciate that. I do, but it's uh, yeah, it was just kind of a weird, weird thing. Isn't it weird how we live in a world right now where our success is based on views and? And number of friends and, and clicks and clicks yeah. and yeah, you know, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it is. I, I yeah, I to be honest, I don't pay that much attention to that stuff just because it's, I don't know, it just kind of wears me out mentally. Like right. it's like chasing like a an imaginary thing, you know what I mean? That totally. truly like means nothing, but right. like you know, people have put this false value on. So, I mean, I, I have, of course love people, you know playing our songs or our videos or, or whatever, or, you know, people that are awesome on social media and give us props and send us cool messages and stuff. I love all that stuff, but it's just, I don't know. It's just, it's, it is, sometimes it weirds me out a little bit. Yeah, it is really weird because it, it feels like you're even, even when we forge uh, relationships online, you know, it feels uh, not, not fake, but it feels almost ghostly. Like it's, it's like, okay, there's this thing, but when it, when it really gets into like a deep relationship and like, say for instance, like we're talking to you right now, you know what I mean? A lot of the bands that we talk to are, you know, people that we would not have met if it wasn't for the internet and that sort of thing and forging those relationships online. So it's just, it's kind of one of those double-edged sword things. Just concerning the video type stuff, the thing that, that made me, I don't know. I'm, I kind of like uh, watching like those weird like conspiracy shows and stuff. I just I think it's <laughs> oh no hell yeah. But I'm just oh, like, no. they, would, they, would just, they would just think that literally all of that stuff is actually controllable and manipulatable. Uh-huh. That's freaking weird to me. I'm like, that's wow. Okay, oh my this God. shows you that it's all you know, it's all facade. You know what I mean? It's like right. the whole numbers thing, like you're saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's oh. actually somewhere, somewhere, someone in a booth could punch in some numbers somewhere and do something and change anything to whatever they want it to be if they had that type of access you know it's yeah. just the one that know, the one that weirds me out is the cern the hydra the atom smasher huh right oh my god you got your way over yeah. my head yeah that's one of the conspiracy things that trust uh me. pass oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah no i don't i know what you're talking about oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, l- let's talk right. about your video for a second because i was i was okay. checking it out again today and it a little bit violent you might say yeah i, I don't know i i I looked at it as a little more uh, beautifully violent. <laughs> like it's, uh, it's, you know, it's like they're almost doing a dance. You know what I mean? Kind of yeah. like when you think of like an old kung fu movie or something. I don't yeah. Know. Well, how did you guys get Ted Nugent to play that role? 
<laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, the dude in the hat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, that's funny. <laughs> what would have been really awesome if, if it really was. Actually, I'm going to go with it was Ted Nugent. Oh, there you go. I like, I like that. <laughs> Roll with it, brother. That's Roll it. with it. No, I got a kick out of the video and uh, and seeing it play out. It, it's pretty cool, man. I, and you say you're working on there. What's the next one in line? What song are you guys doing? Uh, basically, by next week, we have to decide which next song we're doing. That's kind of the the hard part. Is, okay. Uh, you know, I guess that's always the hard part. Even picking the first song was tremendously hard. In some ways, I think we picked well, the perfect song. And in some ways, I'm like, ah, it's the worst song to pick. I'm, I'm like a very self, self-loathing self artist. I'm like, uh, whatever, whatever song we pick, it's the wrong song. Well, I'm <laughs> going to tell you guys how to do it. Each person represents okay. a song in the band. And then you go after mm-hmm. it the way you did in Dirty Foot in the video. Or just fight it out one Perfect. person at so a time. Like duke it out? Yeah, last person standing <laughs> wins. That's, That's it. Perfect. My money's on Ted Nugent. <laughs> yeah, mine too. <laughs> if we could only get him to join the band. God, how many haters would we have then? Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh, right? Oh, Jesus. From Lit, wait, we got a guy from Lip Biscuit and Ted Nugent. <laughs> Ted Nugent. Terrible Ted. Right? Oh, oh, that would be badass. See these oh, guys. We would have, once again, we'd have so many lovers and so many haters. It would yep. be amazing. You see these guys playing the presidential inauguration, you know? <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's fantastic. Just but, so the listeners know, you just came off a sound check. You want to explain what you guys are involved in down there with a little show tonight? Oh, yeah. yeah. We're doing this benefit show. Uh, one of my best buds, uh, Brett Myers, and uh, country singer, former... Uh, MLB World Series winner for the Phillies. And anyways, he started doing country music a few years ago and I've uh, produced some albums for him. And, and anyway, so we put together this kind of stacked band for him. We have Jason Todd, who was in Shinedown and Fuel and Adam Latif, who played in Pop Mud also and also plays guitar and Sleep Killers is in it. And I play in it. Uh, a guy named Zach Gilbert who played in Cold and uh, JJ Gray and Mofro. So, pretty much put together like the super group behind him and we're playing with uh, molly hatchet which is a kind of a that's cool southern rock home, yeah. hometown heroes around here so we're doing uh this big benefit thing uh for veterans and uh uh soldiers and all that kind of stuff and so yeah that's what we're doing i dig it man I, I dig anybody that stands up and does stuff for veterans you you have my support yeah yeah charities in general that are, that are decent you know especially our veterans and these uh we, we know some of the people that are involved in these charities personally and have, have seen firsthand a lot of the good that they do. So obviously that always, sometimes, you know, when you do something for a charity, which is great no matter what, but when you actually see the work that they're doing, that makes it so much more gratifying, you know what I mean? To participate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Well, I got to tell you, we were doing some research on you before you came on the show. And we came across a video, I think it was from last year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh-huh. you were you were getting ready to go audition for STP. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. What was that experience like? It was pretty awesome, strange, amazing, uh, everything. I mean, they're one of my all-time favorite bands. So the story pretty much is one of my closest friends is a guy named Matt Pinfield who's from MTV VH1. I don't know if you guys are familiar. He's a VJ forever. He's hosted right. so many huge things. And anyways, uh, we've been friends for forever. And uh, when they, they had announced that they were looking for a singer and he called and was like, Hey dude, like, man, it would be uh, I really think you should do like a video or something of yourself um, and send it over to, uh, you know, I'll send it over to their people or whatever. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, I don't know. He's like, dude, like, you'd be perfect for that. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I could be perfect for a lot of awesome bands, you know, go put me in, <laughs> you know, Led Zeppelin or something, you know, <laughs> 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 That's all I was just saying, it's like, cool. I appreciate that and all, but he kind of, kind of kept bugging me about it. And finally one night I just went upstairs and kind of just sung like a verse and a chorus to like, I think it was like three or four songs. And, uh, sent it to him the next morning and it's kind of like, Hey, like, so what do you think? You know what I mean? Wrong songs, too short, too long, something, give me some feedback, whatever. Right. Like two minutes later, he sends me a text message and says, Oh, it's awesome. I just sent it to Dean, the guitar player. I'm like, what? I'm like, no, <laughs> no, you give me no feedback. Like, what? Like, oh. So now I'm just freaking. I'm like, really? Like, God, 
Jesus. I'm like, you know, and once again, you know, you always think whatever you did is, at least I, I always think it's less than what anybody else usually thinks it is. You know, they're like, dude, that was awesome. I'm like, yeah, it was all right, I guess. So I'm like, oh God. So anyways, uh, <laughs> Dean hits Matt back and is like, man, he's like, who's this guy? I'm like, man, I really like his voice and uh, I love his look. And da, da, da. I was like, man, he goes, I'm going to look into him, man. Thank you for sending it over. So I at least got that back and was like, wow, okay. Well, shoot, if that's all that happens, then that's amazing. I'm glad that, you know, he, he liked it and, you know, whatnot. That's uh, a giant compliment, you know, coming from somebody like him. Right, sure. So yeah. a whole month goes by and I'm just not really taking it that serious at all. I'm just like, hey, that was cool. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> and so Matt hits me up again and goes, hey, uh, Dean reached out to me and asked me for your contact info. And I was just like, okay. He's like, so what else did he say? He's like, that was it. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, okay, cool. So now I'm like, you know, okay. He's like, so does that mean he's going to call me or what's going to, you know, what's, what's going on? Nothing happens. A whole nother month goes by. <laughs> and, uh, and, and while this is happening, I guess the internet's like just exploding with this whole, like people doing videos and sending in videos and doing all this stuff or whatever. And I'm kind of seeing a little bit of it, but not really, I guess, understanding how much of that was really going on. And so another month goes by and, uh, ended up getting a, uh, an email from their manager basically saying like, Hey, you know, I heard that, you know, Matt sent stuff over the guys, love the video and uh you know they want to get in a room and jam with you it was like so you know could you be available this date or whatever and i was like well <laughs> well let me check my schedule <laughs> sure. but, uh, but yeah i think i could fit you in uh so anyway so that happened i flew out to la the other thing that i thought was a little funny was that they only sent me a list of seven songs to jam so i'm sitting here looking i'm like uh, i'm like dude it's like like plush isn't on here like all these different songs that are you know, you can't go audition for STP to be the singer and not know plush or, you know, whatever fill in the blank, huge song. Right. So I ended up learning like 17 songs. I watched a bunch of their like live stuff and the live stuff they were doing with Chester um, and all that stuff when he was alive. And so got all that together, flew to LA. And the only part that was terrible was right before I fly to LA, um, getting the flu so just oh, to throw yeah. a little bit more pressure on it and now i'm sitting here going i'm like oh god so like do i call him i like, try to reschedule like shit you can't reschedule with stp like that's not, <laughs> that's not what you do but then i'm like dying too so finally i'm just, like i'm starting to get better and i'm like okay well i think i can pull it off or whatever and finally like actually when the day that i woke up to go to the audition the audition was like five o'clock that night was the first day where I was like, wow, like, okay, I think I feel like me, 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 like, wow. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm good. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to be okay. Awesome. And so, so obviously that was kind of stressful. And then, uh, I went in and, uh, jammed with them and coolest part about that was just them. They were the nicest, most humble, awesome dudes ever. Like, I mean, they, they, I can't, can't even, uh, say enough good things about them uh, as, as people and as a band i mean when we were like i'll i would say the number one highlight for me was when we when they kicked into dead and bloated behind me it was i mean i'm pretty sure i had a boner i, mean, I was like <laughs> wow i mean they, just, they sound they, they, they sound i mean they sound so big and so freaking just tight it just was amazing and uh and it was cool too because was, they just let me call out whatever song I wanted to play. So we wow. sat there and played, I think, like all 17 songs. And it's like, wow. okay, well, what about this one? Okay, cool. Let's do it. And then we hung out for a few hours and talked and all that jazz. And that was, uh, that was pretty much that. And then I thought it was pretty cool. Um, you know, Dean actually had reached out to me himself and, uh, thanking me, you know, for auditioning and all that stuff. And I, you know, I knew that they had a, you know, they got a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of people on their team and a lot of opinions and a lot of, you know, whispers and who likes what and all that going on. And, but, you know, I kind of already had an idea that, you know, they were only jamming with a handful of people. So, 
you know, I already knew that my chances were good. And, and finally Dean, uh, just called me on the phone and said, Hey man, you know, I think you killed it. You know, you know, everyone in the band really dug you and all this, but I think we're going to move forward with this other guy who ended up being Jeff Coop. What an amazing story, though, an amazing opportunity. I just think that's so awesome. Yeah, you know? it's like fucking Christmas for most musicians. I mean, you know, yeah. getting to do something like that. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And, and obviously, I don't. I definitely don't take it lightly. It was, uh, I mean, dude, that's like I said in the beginning of this, it's one of my all-time favorite bands. Yeah, it's a testament to your ability as a musician, too, though. Yeah, I've, I, the greatest honor that, uh, that I could come up with, for sure. I mean, that's, uh, I mean, those are mighty big shoes to fill, and, and seeing, uh, you know, Jeff going up there and doing it, man, I think he kills it. Uh, and no matter what, it, even it's like my, uh, I actually was staying out with Sam, uh, when I was in LA doing that, uh, audition thing. And, and he told me, he's like, dude, he's like, like are you sure you want that gig? He goes, that's going to be the hardest gig ever. Yeah. Just because of the scrutiny that people are going to put you under. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah because of the whole Scott stuff and all that. So, yeah. and then he's right. And he's like, but I, I think that, uh, it's so much push and pull there. It's like, I see people even, you know, talking crap about Jeff, you know what I mean? Like he's yeah. trying to be too much like Scott, but then if he wasn't trying to be enough like Scott, then they'll hit on him for that. So yeah. right. it's can't damn win situation. You, damn you. Everything that I've seen uh, so far, he's doing an awesome job. Well, you've always got the story in your pocket. Remember that one time I had a private jam session with STP. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that one, uh, that one goes on the list for the grown kids for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It's amazing. Tell us a little bit about you as a musician. I mean, you're a, a pretty multifaceted guy. What was that like growing up? Were you fixed on one thing or did you just want to master everything? No, I just, I just always like playing instruments, you know, bass or drums or guitar or, you know, kind of started on guitar and moved around to other things. And, you know, I think what really, helped me a lot as a musician was uh when i started doing tv and film music we literally that's kind of my core business um i own a company called give to get music and we do i mean we've worked on i don't know probably 60 70 shows and ton of movies and score movies do all that and that stuff is cool because it is so many different things all at once you know what i mean one day literally we're doing you know, big symphonic scores and, you know, orchestral stuff. And then another day it's, you know, you know, some jazz fusion hybrid stuff. And then the next day is full blown thug hip hop. You know what I mean? It's like, it's so all over the place all the time. And it's kind of really what I love about it is that it's not monotonous and boring. It's, you right. know, it's always changing and it's always different and it's always, uh, you know, I always have people reach out to me all the time asking about like, man, how do you, how do you get into doing all this stuff? It's like, dude, you just don't pigeonhole yourself. You know what I mean? Like go out and try to learn as many different styles and, and as many different uh, instruments and, and all that as you can, because it makes you more valuable. And especially in the, the, you know, composing TV film world, you know, that's huge. I, I would, not be able to do the things that I do um, without having those abilities. And by also doing all this, it just does nothing but increases your abilities. You get better and better, you know, like doing anything else. Yeah. When you were a kid, did you always know that you were going to be a musician when you grew up or did, you know, did you think you were going to be like a, a fireman or something? Uh, I think, I think I wanted to be a professional baseball player. And then yeah, now we're growing, talking. growing growing up growing growing up around guys like Brett kind of changed that for me. <laughs> when you got to like high, high school level and and uh you know he's throwing like 98 miles an hour in like high school and I'm like okay maybe like I'm good but I'm not like that kind of good. <laughs> but yeah. I'm really guitar and chicks seem to really dig this so I think I'm going to keep rocking the guitar some more. <laughs> I love it. That's so, awesome. No, I mean, but but in and in Really, I don't know. I was always interested in music. My dad played in bands and stuff when I was growing up, and I was always around music, even as a little kid. So it was to me. I, I think it was. I almost, when I was a little kid, almost thought that everybody played an instrument because you know all my dad's friends and stuff all played an instrument. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. everyone it was, it was the norm. Something. 
Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's playing something. You know what I mean? Like whether you're just you know messing around in the living room or at a party or whatever, or in the jam room or whatever it is. Like everyone's playing instruments. So it wasn't until kind of later on that I was like, wait a minute, like you don't even play like guitar or nothing. <laughs> like that's weird. Like, <laughs> yeah, so, I've been over so, here mastering the skin flute for a while, but uh, that's a whole other yeah, thing. Yeah, <laughs> play the mean skin flute. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so so. Yeah, I grew up around it, and uh, I think it was when I got to be maybe around like 14 or something, I started really taking it serious and was like, all right, now I don't want to play other people's songs. I want to play my songs. I want to write my own stuff. I want to, you know, do that kind of stuff. And so that was kind of, uh, I guess, the, the start of that is when you start writing your own songs, you know? Do you remember the first song you wrote? Um, Yes. I think. And it was called? I think it was called Scream and Shout. Oh. And it's probably it's probably just as bad as <laughs> that name. <laughs> I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure. Actually, I can, I can guarantee you that my dad has a tape somewhere of like some four-track version of that. Uh, so, yeah. Well, that, that was kind of a, a, the, the beginning, too, for me was when I got a four-track tape recorder that I could actually like, you know, lay down a guitar and then like sing on another track. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah that yeah. was like, that was like the most amazing thing in the whole world to me. Oh, I was yeah. like, Holy shit. Like oh, what now? And old, then I could bounce yeah. those down to another track and then do it again. Like, Holy cow. Those old task so, and fork tracks, yeah. man. I, yeah. That's exactly what it was. I think I, I had I one of those too. Yeah. Yeah. That's. And then also that kind of, I think it was the beginning of my love for recording and engineering and that side of things too. Like, cause then you know, the next step is like, once you can record yourself, it's like, well, how do I make it sound good? Right. Like, why do I, why when I go to that, why, when I go to that studio, it sounds awesome. But then when I record at my house, it sounds like crap. It's like, okay, I need that microphone. Okay. But I need that compressor. I need that. You're like, God, this costs a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get the money first. And then we can buy all this other cool stuff. Right. You know, you talk about your dad a lot as far as kind of being in the music scene with you as, as far as growing up and whatnot. How is his support for you now? Does he go to your shows and, you know, that sort of thing? Oh, uh, he's, run, he's, he's running front house tonight. Oh, really? He's, he's, he's sound guy. Awesome. Yeah, actually, I was, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys, but uh, so up until a couple months ago, basically I was out on the road with Saliva playing bass for like seven months. Nice. Oh, hmm. pretty much this whole year. Um, they're well, obviously, you know, Bobby's in Sleep Killers, the singer. So we've all been friends. I've produced stuff with them and co-wrote songs with Saliva over the years, and so I've known all them forever. And this whole opportunity kind of came around, and it was really it was supposed to be, hey, can you do a couple shows? I'm like, uh, I've got a lot going on, but okay, I think so. <laughs> And then, like, seven months later and, like, 60, 70 shows later, we're like, oh. Like, come on, guys. Wait a minute. Like, whoa. Like, that was supposed to be a couple shows. And uh, so then my buddy Brad Stewart, the bass player, uh, who also used to play in Shinedown and a bunch of bands, in was he uh, ended up uh, coming back to the band. He was kind of getting to a place. Like, all right, guys. Like, Brad, please come back. Like, <laughs> like we're about to release this Sleep Killers thing. Like, I can't be on the road doing all this no more. But it was it was a blast. and. The reason why I would say that too is because even uh, my dad came out and did front house for for some of that stuff too, and he's a great a uh, great sound guy. And yes, so awesome. he's still uh, very supportive and and always around. And and I think it's kind of a comfort thing for me too, Absolutely. just because. Sure. Yeah, that's like, awesome. I know. I know if he's there, he's like the guy who literally will like. He's a, a, a electrical engineer, master electrician type too so like he'll like rewire the whole freaking arena or whatever he's got to do to make things work like he's he's uh he's kind of crazy when it comes to that stuff so it's good good to have somebody who uh knows how to do a lot of things that's amazing getting back to sleep killers and the new mm-hmm. album let me just clarify how many songs are on this album is this an ep or an album 10 it's 10, 10. total okay because uh, yes. the epk i think has like four available so I wasn't sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. That's, yeah. Those are, that's just uh, some of them. And so are, are you planning to do a full fledged release on this or is this a slow release? What's, what's the plan here? The plan is in sometime first quarter, we're going to release the album 
but we kind of feel like there's a couple of schools of thought here. One is nobody gives a shit about your album. All they care about is singles. And I that a lot. Yeah. So, and so that being said, it, it makes it now got to remember like Sam and I like come from this old school mentality. It's like, dude, like I created like a body of work, an album, you know what I mean? Right. Like this, like means something to me. This is a, a album. It's just not some songs we threw together and called it an album. It's an album. You know, it's not a concept <laughs> album or anything like that, right. but it's, but it belongs together. But you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, it belongs together. There is a theme that a thread that kind of runs through it, uh, you know, lyrically and story wise and stuff. And so we love that, but then it's kind of like the more you talk to anybody and kind of more as you understand just the state of, I guess people's mentalities or something these days, you know what I mean? Like people's attention spans are just so short. It's like, so we kind of said, all right, you know what? Inevitably we're going to release the album, but let's just make a bunch of videos. We're, right now we're talking, I think we're going to do like five videos. Um, the second one's going to be done uh, real soon. And we're just going to keep putting out videos. And then we'll at some point have to, hammer down a, a release date are keeps trying to tell us that and we're like nope no we're not we're not giving a release date first yeah. quarter that gives us all the way what through march so perfect right yeah at which time you could say second quarter it, and, I, and we could <laughs> yeah exactly no joke there was, uh, at one point sam and i were like why don't we just do a video for every song on the album it's not unheard of a it, lot it, of bands yeah. are doing it now. it's not a bad idea album after you've released them all yeah, that's like, who you know, is it? Visa, Visa, is that what they're called? Uh, yeah, they're mm -hmm. at Aftershock. That's what they just did. They took over a year to drop every song, and then they released the album in its whole at the end of the year. Yeah, and I, I think that's kind of cool. Like, I mean, it's it's trying to trying to find a way to like kind of stay with uh, you know people's new school thought process, but mm -hmm. you know also still giving it a whole album too, and and getting I guess that gratification of knowing that people you know get that this is a body of work too you know absolutely yeah for sure yeah it's a strange new world out there in the music industry we're still trying to figure it out i mean we're on the forefront uh, talking to artists and we still absolutely don't understand it <laughs> <laughs> well because it's been another thing too that that has been liberating about this process uh particularly for guys we keep reminding each other, be like, you know what? We don't have to do anything that we don't want to do. We can do it exactly how we feel like doing it. Yeah, damn Nobody's right. Nobody's making us do anything. Like we've talked to some labels and we've talked to, to some people. Inevitably, we're going to have to zero in a manager and stuff like that when the time has to come. And But like at the moment, it's like, no, we don't have to do anything. We yeah. could drop the album tomorrow if we feel like it. Or we could drop it next year this time we can do whatever we want to you know what i mean and that's cool you know what i mean that feels good to us and we're trying to we're trying our best to to be the kind of band that like really listens to their audience you know what i mean like after we've put out you know x amount of songs i think we'll know that like okay let's drop the album right. and yeah. the other thing too is that i think once you start my my personal school of thought is once you're going to go out and play shows I think the album should be out there because how else are people going to know your songs? Yeah. So yeah, that's, absolutely. That's kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of weird. Even if people want to be fans or whatever, it's like, they know like two singles and then they're like, yeah, but we don't have the album. So we have no clue what the song is you're playing right now. Right. So it's like, it's like almost hard to like go off to a song when you're like, I'm just hearing it for the first time. Like I love your band, but I'm just going to sit here and listen if that's cool. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. You, you have a good point. Yeah, and, and so, also it gives them the opportunity to really get into the music and live the music with you guys when they know it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, it just, you know, it's just anticipation, you know what right. I mean? There's nothing cooler than, you know, when you're watching a band that you really love or whatnot, they start the beginning of that song that you love and you're like, yes, that's it. Yeah. My jam, you know? <laughs> and, if, and really, if you flip that as a musician, you know, you feed off of the crowd and if the crowd doesn't know your songs then they're kind of, you know, just kind of hanging out, you know, but if, if they yeah. know the songs, they're really into it and they're singing it. Exactly. Well, and that's kind of, you, you could kind of see, I guess, our uh, conundrum a little bit there. We're like kind of, okay, how do we find the balance of doing this whole release and singles thing and 
releasing the album at the right, you know, also make sure that the fans know the songs. So somewhere I think we're going to figure it out though. Like I, at the moment, we're just trying to not allow anybody to let us feel pressure on any of that yet and just concentrate on like, we're already, you know, toying with, with new songs. Like we want to, you know, we're, we're ready to, to kind of zero in uh, this strategy for, for putting this music out and let's do more music. You know what I mean? So cool. yeah. Well, that, um, keep it fresh. Yeah. Yeah. So you're already kind of trying yeah. to, trying to grow. You're already trying to grow your brand. That's brand new that you're launching. Exactly. Yeah. Well, no, I think you know, that's amazing. That, 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 yeah, no, it's, 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 it's like anything else. You want to keep it fresh, like you said. And it's, uh, I think it happens to a lot of bands. You spend so much time working on your album that by the time it comes out, you're like, dude, I'm over that album. I like, can't, yeah, <laughs> cool, whatever. Like, I know you're just now hearing it for the first time. I've heard it a thousand trillion times. <laughs> right, right. So when we spoke at Aftershock, um, you said you guys weren't really looking to do anything live at the time. Are you guys thinking about some live shows in the next year or so? What do you, where are you at with that? Yeah. Yeah, no, we're, we definitely want to do shows. It's just, uh, you know, a couple of things lining up schedules, you know, the guys and the band, uh, you know, also play in other bands and, and have other schedules to, to deal with. And then, um, we said that whenever we do our first show, we, uh, still really want to do a streaming concert. Right. And we've talked to, uh, uh, a couple of uh, uh, companies that want to back us on doing this whole like big streaming experience type thing. And to where, you know, when you do watch it, uh, you know, on the internet or whatnot, that it sounds really killer and all that stuff. So uh, we definitely want to do that as the first show. And, uh, you know, I just think it's kind of different and innovative. And it's a very new school. Why not? Yeah, yeah I love it. Yeah. yeah, just do it, you know, for, cause that's the thing too, is that we've, it, it's been really cool. I've never experienced something like this. I know Sam has lived in that world with the biscuit thing, but you know, we've had a lot of fans from like all kinds of countries, like too many to even count just from, from all over the place. So, um, just even to be fair to them, just thought it would be cool to, to do a really well put together, um, streaming experience that you know everybody can enjoy for the first show and then you know we'll pull some strings and talk to our friends and other bands and you know start doing um what we like to refer to as strategic touring we're, we're definitely not in the market for you know jumping in the van and going out for three months right yeah <laughs> doing that kind of thing yeah you know we've we've we've, yeah. we've, we've done that you know we've we've kind of uh kind of not feeling that whole process so you know we definitely will be playing shows just uh um i think we're just really just zeroing in um the approach that we want to take with it but it's definitely going to still start with the streaming show and kind of uh go from there obviously we're going to be looking into a lot of the festival stuff um yeah. we've already had just in releasing this first song we actually have had offers for festivals all over the world um yeah. come in so and then now we're going to ultimately have to get a booking agent and all those things that we said we weren't going to get are ultimately <laughs> having to happen now. That's, so, that's a good problem to have. Yeah. But at least now it's kind of like we're getting it because we need to get it. Not just because you think you're supposed to have one. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's on difference. your terms. Yeah, exactly. Well, Damien, you know what? You've been a fantastic guest. I really appreciate you taking the time to come back on the show and work with us again. Absolutely. We look forward to working with you throughout your entire career. Is there anything that we didn't talk about today that you wanted to? Well, if anybody knows how to get the Jaguars back on track, no, oh, um, you're screwed there, pal. Make sure, <laughs> make, make sure to, to send me a send me a, a message on social media so that I can pass that along. Uh, I know how to do it. You send them yeah, up to New England and bring New England's team down to yours, and you got it. <sighs> that's weird. Well, Jaguars are like. That. They're that team. We'll kick the crap out of the Patriots <laughs> and then have like the worst team in the league beat the crap out of us. It's like, <laughs> how did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> Go home. You're drunk. <laughs> uh, you you <laughs> take, so, take this into heart. At least you're not the Raiders. Yeah. Oh, Wayne, Wayne Sweeney from, uh, from saliva. That's his team. Oh. And, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, he's he's having he's having a, a rough. <laughs> Give him the business, brother. <laughs> uh huh. Absolutely. Well, hey man, you guys uh, are are awesome as always too, man, and uh, would love to uh, come and talk to you anytime. All right, man. Thanks so much for doing the show today. All right, guys. Well, guys, what do you think? I think Dirty Foot's a good song. That's what I think. Yeah. I think that he's very insightful, and I think that they have a wonderful thing going on, a wonderful opportunity, and especially the fact of the matter that they're doing what they want to do. I, yeah. That just warms my heart. I think it's just a, a brilliant. And it's amazing. That brings up a good point because they, being a bunch of guys that have been in successful bands, right. mm-hmm. uh, they're choosing to do something outside of, nothing wrong with those bands, right? but they're choosing to do it for the right reason. Exactly. Yeah, the joy of making good music. Right, yeah. exactly. And I, I support these guys 120%. Said it a million times, I'll say it again. And I think that they're doing great things. We've heard some music that the listening audience obviously hasn't at this point. Right. Keep your eye on these guys. They're doing big things. And I think this band is going to go a lot of places. Some of these guys may have to leave the other gigs <laughs> uh, or figure it out because yeah. they uh, need to be careful here because they're talking about not wanting to tour. This may force them I to think, get on the road. I, a little I, bit. I think it's going to grow beyond their expectations. And I yeah. hope it does. Yeah. So again, that was Damian Starkey of Sleep Killers. Go over and check them out. And we'd like to say thank you to all of you who have tuned in today and checked out our show. Thank you again, because without you, we're nothing. Do us a favor, if you would. If you like this show, go over to wherever you subscribe to this podcast and give us a rating and review, especially Apple Podcasts. We don't know why, but it makes a difference. So go over there, give us five stars and say something. It doesn't really matter what it is. <laughs> Come over and check us out on honestbrutality.com. That's all things Honest Brutality all of the time. And you can find out what's going on with us. And you can also interact with us on all of our socials on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'd love it if you did. You can also give us a call. If you would, please. 530-962-0411. Again, that's 530-962-0411. Give us a call. If you have any suggestions for the show, we'd love to hear them. You can check us out on Rock Rage Radio, currently with two shows, one on Saturdays at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, two hours of fun, mayhem, music, and madness. And you can check us out on Tuesday nights. Yes, so Center Stage with Honest Brutality, where we talk to bands, we play their rad music for you. 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern time, right here on Rock Rage Radio. In the meantime, be good people, take care of one another, and most importantly, stay metal! Stay metal. Hey guys, this is Damon from Sleep Killers, and this is our song, Dirty Foot, right here on Honest Brutality. I'll be on 